Right, welcome back to Channel Center Trash Code. I'm Midhearts3, and today we are back in Dragon Age Inquisition. Last time we kicked off the game, um, we created our character, Phaedra Lavellian, Mage. Um, we fell out of the sky apparently, or we fell out of a rift that happened because of the hole in the sky. Um, we temporarily sealed the hole in the sky, kind of like putting it under control in a way. And we met some characters that we will be... that should be familiar and unfamiliar. It's always nice to see new faces. So, today we're going to be starting in Haven. And this is the area from Dragon Age Origins, because... What had happened was there was a conclave at the at the end of Dragon Age 2. We kick off the beginning of the Mage Templar War. And this, I don't know when the game is set. I know that it's 10 years after Dragon Age Origin ends. And they are having this conclave at the Temple of Sacred Ashes from Dragon Age Origins to kind of like mediate like between the Templars and the Mages to kind of find a common ground in a way, but none of that came to fruition or whatever what was said at this conclave was effectively just sh just shattered, just turned to ash as an explosion erupted at the site of the Temple of Secret Ashes, creating this breach in the sky. And we ha were put in prison because we were the only survivor and we've been to the site since we made our way up there in order to kind of like seal the first rift in a way and the whole place was decimated it was a, it, like a giant blast crater through the center and now people don't know what to think of us before they thought like everyone was like in a collective mindset that we were the reason that it happened because we were the only one that survived. But that doesn't seem to be true. It seems to be a different story um, unfolding um, to the side, but actually not really to the side because it is our main point of focus, is to find out who caused the explosion at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, who killed Justinia, and yeah, I'm kind of getting off topic, but um, apparently people think that Andraste helped us, and I don't know if that's to be true or not. I don't know if I want my Lavellian to be an Andrastean. Um, I don't know if she believes in the Maker. The elves have their own, the elven have their own pantheon, we know. We've heard of Mithal in great detail, and Fenerel, um, the trickster god. So, I don't know. <clears throat> but today, we're gonna be exploring Haven. Haven looks def- looks different since the first time we've been here since in Dragon Age Origins. So it's seen um, up some upgrades. I mean, obviously in a holy conclave, um, an expedition was made here by um, Liliana. I guess they're trying to huddle for warmth. Anyway, yeah, Haven looks definitely um, just different. So we're going to be exploring inside the Chantry and outside the Chantry. We're just going to be taking a look around, kind of get the lay of the land, see people. Um, we do have some companions. We have a map. So quest map. So this is the area of that we are working with. Um, we have some quests that we need to do. So we have the war room. Um, we need to give um, Menave. That N is really tripping me up. An item to research. Uh, we need to report to the Chantry. We need to speak with the Quartermaster. There's the Quartermaster. There's just different places. There's Varric. We can toggle waypoints in this game. Hallelujah. Um, there's more quests. Just special shipments. <clears throat> this, I will say, is my fourth time playing this. Like, my fourth playthrough, I think. Um, I had my first two... I've already played as an elf. Um, I recently played as a Quinari. Yes, this would be my fourth playthrough of this game. And yeah, so we'll take it slow. 
we'll just do this for today. The it's try it's different trying to structure how I'll lay out like areas because they're quite large. Like this is just Haven. I mean you have to leave the map in order to like get out, get out, but like this is just a hub area and it's quite expansive. So I will say I am getting over a cold. Um this video I don't know when it's gonna go out. But and we won't really have any time stamps because I've already had I'm not gonna get any achievements. I've basically not basically one hundred percent did the game. But all I have are a few trials left to do before I do so. But yeah. So starting on the right side of the chantry, we have some elf root. The game has an interesting feature um, pressing in on the left stick. You can search so you can find materials. There is crafting in this game, so it's best to pick up as many materials as you can or as you want to. Um, so yeah, and the crafting portion will be important, like knowing where to find different. Oh. Are going to die before this is over. Not as many as would have if we weren't here. Now hush and pass me a bandage. Wow, they're far away from the medical tent. But yeah, um, knowing where certain items come from is going to help you. I will say that. It'll be made easier later on in the game. Actually, not even that later on. But yeah. So going to the left side of the chantry, there was a jar with like a porcelain cameo. And then we can loot a sack with um, dragonling scales and spindleweed. So we don't have to worry about collecting <laughs> like we did in Dragon Age 2, thank heavens. But... It would be nice to get a kind of like stockhold of different items in order to create and upgrade certain things, but we won't have to worry about that until we visit some other tents. I heard something. Alfred. Especially earlier on in the game, it's important to like pick up items as much as possible. You can make sure you have enough. Because later on in the game, I found that I have so many items that it just doesn't really matter. And the survivability is so much better. I just don't have to worry. Yeah. Going down the stairs, we can visit the first house, um, which is kind of like an infirmary. But there's a paper on the desk next to a window. Patient observation day three. So I think they're, the patient they're talking about is us. So less thrashing, some response to um, stimulus. Uh, vitals are seem solid. Vitals seem solid. Two attempts so far by locals to break into the chantry to kill my patient. All this work to save her life, and they and will they just execute her? We'll inform Lady Cassandra. I expect her to wake before the morn. I think we were we were out for three days. It's a long time. Out in front of the house, there is a sack with. Um, Drake stone in it, and before we head downstairs, we see Varric, so we can stop and talk to him. So, now that Cassandra's out of earshot, are you holding up all right? I mean, you go from being the most wanted criminal in Thetis to joining the armies of the faithful. Most people would have spread that out over more than one day. I'm just glad I'm still standing after all that. I still can't believe you survived Cassandra. You're lucky you were out cold for most of her frothing rage. For days now, we've been staring at the breach, watching demons and maker knows what fall out of it. Bad for morale would be an understatement. I still can't believe anyone was in there and lived. If it was that bad, why did you stay? Cassandra said you were free to go. I like to think I'm as selfish and irresponsible as the next guy, but this? Thousands of people died on that mountain. I was almost one of them. And now there's a hole in the sky. Even I can't walk away and just leave that to sort itself out. I'm still not sure I believe any of this is really happening. If this is all just the Maker winding us up, I hope there's a damn good punchline coming. You might want to consider running at the first opportunity. I've written enough tragedies to recognize where this is going. Heroes are everywhere. I've seen that. But the hole in the sky... That's beyond heroes. We're going to need a miracle. It's nice to see Varric again. 
I will say that. Wasn't expecting to see him. But after the ending to Dragon Age 2, I guess it makes sense that we see him. Because he was with Cassandra. Um, we don't know why he is originally with Cassandra in the beginning part of the game. But we did see Liliana. And Liliana and Cassandra are working together. So we can jump up here and look at the paper on the post. Andraste's Mavari, a popular, if historically unlikely, Freldon Tavern song. I spoke with Commander Cullum. I, uh, apologize for what I said earlier. It's nothing. Now, Scout Plane, what can you tell me of Redcliffe? The mages have been quiet since their attack on the Conclave. Their attack? Do you have information confirming that the mages were responsible? Well, I had assumed. Don't. Our job is to acquire actionable information. Assumptions can lead you to overlook something vital. Mm, that is true. Always, if you hold your assumptions too close to your heart, you can never see the situation for what they truly are. But that name sounds familiar. Cullen? Surely it can't be the same Cullen from Dragon Age 2. Surely not. But in any case, we can turn and explore these houses to the side. There's mages, there's people, all about. But we can go to the house. The door facing to the south. Come there, and then we can turn and we can go into the house that we actually walked out of. Where we were, um, just chilling. I don't think I have any more special shipments. No more special shipments. And nothing else here, so we can turn around and we can leave. Gonna just explore behind the house real quick to see if there's any materials. Nope. Oh, yes, there's no fruit. <laughs> and then I can see some elf fruit right here. And then more elf fruit and a chest by the tree that we can loot. And inside we find a Bruce Feather Charm. I'm probably saying that wrong, but you know what? That's alright. So, when we're ready, we can make our way down the stairs and then. Not to be by the it is reasonable to believe that magic was involved, but we cannot assume it was the rebels. How many powerful mages died in the Conclave Scout Plane? How would those deaths benefit the rebels? Hey, I'm not sure. Good. Now you're thinking. That's a start. What's your name, anyway? You may call me Charter Scout Belay. Now lower your voice. Your report is not for the world at large. <laughs> I mean, I'm listening. Well, we can kind of do like a loop, so we'll end up back on the outside. I'm back on the inside and explore the far side of the um, camp of Haven. But we're going to go out, and there's the soldiers who are fighting. We're not fighting, they're sparring. We can talk to someone named Lisette. Cannot stay here. Why not? Because we're Templars. What does that even mean anymore? That we splinter and fight amongst ourselves instead of protecting the mages? Better that than stay here with this Inquisition. You're awfully quick to dismiss the people who saved your life, Master. Oh, well. We can loot the chest in between these two um, tents to find a braid of rank. Braid of rank. But it's kind of interesting to see the like the split. Like everyone's kind of like suspicious of the mages because you know that's powerful magic. Whatever it is, whatever caused that must have been magic. But like the Templars that decide to stay because they know that their sole duty is to protect mages as well and not just like oppress them is interesting but we can talk to Lysette yes. hello I don't know why I'm able to talk to you specifically but I will do so I like your take on the Templar order it's a shadow of what it was where once we both protected all people from the dangers of magic we now posture and grab at power one day I hope the circles are again sanctuaries where mages can practice their craft you're not going to rejoin the order? When the temple went up, 
Your forces rescued those few of us still alive. My life is a debt I intend to repay, however I can. Do you have any idea what caused the explosion? No, I'm just a recruit. Belief and faith doesn't get you closer to the important meetings. Though, that distance did save my life. Oh, okay. What I'm thinking is that there was, like, people probably stationed in Haven, or just, like, stationed at a further camp, and then the more important people went to Haven, the Conclave, the Temple of Sacred Ashes, to kind of, like, actually have deliberations. So anyone that was actually in that room is definitely gone. I will talk to you later. Walk in the Maker's grace. And you as well. Okay. On the outside, rocks that are like basically the foundation of the camp that of Haven. Um, we can find iron. So we can loot some iron as we like kind of go around the outer wall. Ah, oh, this is the one thing about the Dragon Age Inquisition. It's like, yes, it's very pretty, but man, are the areas large. And everything so spaced out. Okay, so we are now rounding up on what is the leaving area door, so we can ignore that and just kind of keep hiking. Deedly dee, she's out on a walk, as nature intended. A lot of resources, and like I said, important to grasp. We don't have to fight that nug. We won't fight the nug. We won't. We won't. I don't want to kill any nugs if I don't need to. <laughs> and you, you will kill a lot of helpless creatures by accident, I will say that. If not you, your friends, your companions, the people that you willingly bring with you, they will- you will accidentally graze an animal or they will have already taken damage and your characters will zone in and say that guy i'm gonna end his entire career and they will do they they will they will do so so as we're walking um we found a little fork in the path i kind of take it i took the mountain way but you can take the actual dirt path makes it easier to get back and forth or like to at least know where you're going but there's a little cabin at the end of it yes so um, the compass will pulse sometimes, and it will indicate that there's something that needs to be revealed. And you'll know it because your controller will kind of vibrate as well. So just, you know. And it will something here. do a little ring noise. Better take a closer and look. You can see it on the ground. It will kind of point in a direction. So that means it's inside the house. So letting ourselves in. We can examine these papers. Um, keep the notes for later. Passing notes. Okay. I don't know what that was, but all right. The ground doesn't seem like to be anything of interest or note in the house, so we can just make our way around. I say I'm going to stop picking up every piece of elf fruit that I come across, but I know how important it is to get as much stuff as you can. Because you never know. You never know. Alright. And I just realized, because I, like, when I look at it, it doesn't do the arrow, but I have a level up. I have a level up. I can't level up because I'm attacking. Please put that away. Please put that. Thank you. Okay. Character record. Let's level up all of the. There we go. LB is to pull up this wheel. So we have our potions. Those potions are shared. You cannot get more than eight potions unless you have an upgrade or a belt that says that you can have more potions. Um, these are extra potions that you can add onto your wheel, but I don't think you can add more health potions. We can find grenades and everything, but we'll talk about that later. Um, there's attack my target, uh, disengage. This is locked for now, so we don't have to worry about it. This is clear commands, and this is hold person. I mean hold position. Hold position does not work in this game. 
it does not work at all. So don't even don't even think about it. It doesn't exist. Just act like they forgot to put hold position in this game. No matter how hard you try, how hard you wish, um, how hard you hope, pray, it's never gonna work. And maybe, maybe it will, but only for a short time. So just don't have any hopes or dreams about it, really. So we're on the outskirts of the map, kind of going, making our way around in a way. And while we're going, we find a logging stand. These are areas and areas like these, you'll know them by just the look of them and then they'll have that part there. Oh, someone forgot to- that's dangerous to keep a saw there. But you'll know them by just- sometimes they'll appear on the map and you can just pick them up. These are things that you will need later. There's a special tool that you will need for later on. And then this wide open area and that truffalo. Okay, that's that. Did any of them drop anything? You did. Good. Good, 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 good. Truffle hide. Okay. Well, that was quite pointless. So we need to get a research material that can be brought back, but I'm hoping that I just already have one. I'm not gonna- I've learned my lesson. I'm not gonna fight that Truffalo. <coughs> I would have been better off fighting the Nug on the way, but now you know, if you ever need Ruffalo Hide, this is where they graze. That is the tactician map. This is where they graze, on the outer skirts, kind of like in this greenish area. Alright. Iron. Hello. Goodbye. Okay. Almost finished our little trek around. Around uh, the outskirts of the map. There's not really much out here. At all, really. See, this is what I'm talking about. I had an idea for when I was like, oh, I'm gonna do a little walk around of this entire area. Completely out, like, completely gone. Completely thrown away. Throw it away. If you had an idea, you had, throw it away. So, yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna be making our way back to the area that we just walked through, but this is a path that you could take up to the lake. I mean, up from the lake to this bridge that is, I think, the other leaving area. Okay. Nothing? Okay. And this is another out area. Oh, it's saying that there's something on the map. Ah. On a crate, there is a scroll, and I think it talks about this bridge. Penitent's Crossing. Pilgrims seeking to visit the Temple of Sacred Ashes are allowed to ride as far as this bridge, known as Penitent's Crossing. Then, whether be sick or healthy, young or aged, the pilgrims are expected to walk by the Temple Sisters, who supervise the bridge. All but the very sick and old are asked to shed heavy coats as they cross the bridge, allowing the cutting winds to strip prideful fixation upon the world from the flesh. The bridge is also of significant military value, used especially for these purposes in the years since the Fifth Blight, as a choke point against bandits, rebels, or even darkspawn stragglers. The bridge serves as a defensible fortification to protect the Temple of Sacred Ashes from threats. From Walking the Chant by Sister Dorcas Guerin. Guerin. Oh, that last name sounds familiar. I, is that... Is that Tegan's last name? Is that Tegan and Arl Eamon's last name? But yeah, there's all these bodies. But next to them, there's a sack with 52 gold and fennec fur. And this door does not open. If you leave the bounds of the area or enter somewhere lethal, you're jumped back to your previous point. Yeah. Ooh. I didn't mean to rock all over you. I'm sorry. Like, so one of the bodies is some gold with 61 coins. Okay. Now we can make our way back 
make our way up past the fortifications back to the camp where they are sparring in between two tents on the right side there's a chest a little box that we can loot with a firm a firm round pommel and a potions belt so the potions belt gives us a plus one extra potion capacity so we can hold nine potions instead of eight and a firm round pommel um gives us plus three to strength but that can be equipped on a weapon of our choice Things that are outside are there's a few tents, there's a sparring grounds, there is um, this golden nug, and a blacksmith. I heard Seeker Pentecost might try to acquire suitable mounts from Master Dennett in the hinterlands. Oh, and who are you to be fishing around for what the higher ups are doing? Back in Ansberg, my uncle was fifth traitor. And what's that mean for you back in Ansberg? Honestly, about as much as it does here. Fair enough. If you have played this game recently, there is a fallback, like a sinking thing called the Golden Nug. You have to play the game significantly in your first playthrough in order to acquire it. But once you acquire it, every single schematic that you ever picked up, as long as you sink it to this nug, you will be able to get back. So, I have done so. I'm going to activate that when, um, afterwards because the sinking thing goes on for a very 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 long time as i've said i've done this play i've done at least four playthroughs so i've done partial playthroughs but this would be my fourth full playthrough um so we can talk to harriet expected Hello. you'd be by i'm harriet and everyone knows who you are how's the new gear fit sturdy and warm it's perfect good world's gone mad. Stock armor and blades are good against bandits, but we're not fighting bandits. My gear will see you through demons, apostates, whatever this world throws at you. So, you need custom work, something special. You bring the materials to us, we'll make it happen. How did you come to be here? Come from a little town called Lothering. Long gone now. I was in Redcliffe when the Darkspawn hit it during the Blight. Helped rebuild. Left when Walty decided it was time to hand the place over to the bloody mages. Ended up here. Just missed the boom. Can't decide if I'm the luckiest son of a bitch walking or the exact opposite. You're still walking. That's always good. True enough. Who outfits the Inquisition's soldiers? Not me. I've got work to do. Can't be passing a sword to every blighter who signs up. If you want to help the troops, talk to Thren, the Quartermaster. She'll set up requisitions. Does the Inquisition not have supplies to make armor or weapons? Tough convincing traders to haul up here. Impossible to get them to risk the rare stuff, so that's on you. What can you and your team make here? Arms and armor. We work iron to blighted dragon bone, if you've got it. Our designs are simple, but they get the job done. You want something fancy? Bring your own design. We'll see what we can do. So that gives us a bit of a um, outskirts. So there's a person that we need to find who's the quartermaster. We've already been tasked with finding them. Um, they're the one that gives us requisitions, stuff to find, basically, while we're doing stuff around the world. And then we have to bring our own materials. That's why it's very important to make sure that you're picking up everything. Even if you don't feel like killing the little furry creatures by accident, sometimes you need to if you want different leathers, different materials, because different materials give you different buffs and bonuses. So it's important to know, especially what you're, um, it's important to know and make sure that you're keeping up with, like, upgrading materials and such. So. Can you help improve my arms and armor? Yes. You find a new piece, a pauldron or greaves, we'll take care of you. You can't just slap a new ill on your sword in the field. Bring it here, we'll make sure it's done right and proper. So by that he's saying there are different stations that we can look at. Um, one outfits armor, one outfits weapons. Um, you can add different things. So if you find somebody that drops like some pauldrons that you like or something that gives a better bonus, you can come back to one of the stations and they'll slap, like you can just put it on there for you. If I want something, what can you make? Start simple, something to keep you safe. 
Take a look at it on the table there and we can talk. You'll need materials. You should have what you want just outside. All right, thank you. Goodbye. Right. All right, Codex Unlocked, A Study of the Fifth Blight, Volume 2. Loot this crate that's right next to him that's got an apprentice staff, some cotton, some sanite, some onyx. Enough to build something if you need to. You can craft armor at these stations. So crafting. To craft new armor or weapons, you need a schematic or and enough materials. The schematics determine the appearance and the potential of the power of the crafted item. The materials determine the specific stat and the powers that will be added to the new item. So I'm not going to get into it like fully. I've gotten some things that are like from uh, DLC, but you'll find your schematics you here for armor crafting. You can modify your weapons here. You can modify your armor here. We don't have anything for armor, but modifications, upgrading an uh, item adds the upgraded stats to the item stats in addition to changing its appearance. For example, attaching a hilt with a plus three cunnings bonus to a sword adds the bonus to the sword. So like we said, we found that pommel, we can add it to a different like sword or hammer um, or mace and it'll give that plus three to strength to that weapon. So modifications, you can freely remove and add existing upgrades or exchange them between different items. New upgrades can be crafted in crafting stations. The only thing is I don't know, I think it holds true to Dragon Age 2 with runes. Later on we'll get some runes and everything and I think that they, like if you use them, they just go away. Like if you replace them, they go away. So. Another time. Yeah, so we have this Morning Star. Oh, we can't. Right, because none of these weapons can hold a pommel. They're not long swords. They're not hammers. Another time. Yes, another time. I don't know why I keep saying it. We can loot this crate that where he was standing, and we can find apprentice coat arms. Okay, cool. So we can modify our armor. We have our apprentice coat. I don't know why I'm wearing that funny little hat, but anyway. We can add these arms onto it, and it just adds like some gloves or something. And we get a plus 3% bonus to magic defense. We can add that. And then we can confirm the changes. And it's done. Right. Done and dusted. This is where we craft our weapons. All we have right now is um, an apprentice staff, but that's alright. Oh. Alright. But that is the blacksmith area, which is a place that if you are into um, upgrading your own materials, uh, creating your own weapons and armor, then that is a place you're going to be spending a lot of time. But there's nothing in the blacksmith's hut that's right next to it, so we can walk past the what Come might on, be the horse stables. My uncle died at the conclave. I'm a good writer, and, well, I thought I'd be more useful here. Ah, uh, we'll see. The Inquisition, or the beginning parts of it, is really interesting because it's a lot of people that are coming together for a cause that most are uncertain about, but we're kind of just in the area. Some people have traveled here because they lost someone, and they want to, like help, make a difference, see that we're trying to make a difference, and think that's a noble cause. So, yeah. Uh, we have Secret. Ah, you're awake and out of Lady Cassandra's clutches. And I slipped that uh, young elven lass good coin to tell me when you came back to us. No matter, no matter. Secret, honored to meet you. Thank you for all you've done, and hopefully will still do. What do you think I'll be doing, exactly? Word's already spreading that if anyone can close that blighted thing in the sky, it's you. Anything you need is yours. For a reasonable price, of course. Supplies are a little tight, given the circumstances. What kind of person stays to run a shop at a time like this? The kind with nowhere else to go. Those blasted demons destroyed most of my goods. If I stay here, work some contacts, I can start rebuilding. Maybe, just maybe, help you folks out in the process. You must speak with most everyone here. 
How are people doing? Hope and fear in equal measure. No one really knows what it means when an Inquisition is called. Yet, I imagine it's no better for you. You've got my sympathies, for what it's worth. Can I see what you have for sale? Of course. My wares are at the table. All right, his wares are at the table. We can buy and sell. So he's got an Im the. He's got an infinite supply, so you don't have to worry about like buying something and it like no longer being there. So, you can buy things and arm yourself to the teeth if you must. Get some modifications for certain weapons. It's very true to this game as well, of course. Varric cannot be parted from Bianca, so we have schematics for different things in order to build modifications for Bianca, which is nice. This lower road leads to a trebuchet. I don't see why we need to build siege equipment. We're not laying siege to anything. That's an excellent point, recruit. But if someone comes to lay siege to us, perhaps it will be best for us to have some means to fight back. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Yeah, it's important to always have siege equipment if you can have it. You can read Siege Equipment in Thetis from Kuhn, Gurns, and Steel. Military Conflict in the Post Blight Thetis, written in 929 Dragon, shortly before the start of the Fifth Blight. Yeah, so that doesn't take into account the uh, mages who are now out and about and free because they don't need no circles and no circles can hold them back. Uh, next to the trebuchet is a sack with uh, bronto hide and lamb's wool in it. I did see something else up here. Oh no, I'm falling and I can't get up. Maybe not. Alright, there's another sack kind of by this fire. I've heard it was mages. Demons. Did it? No one really knows. And a jar. With frilled and skirmisher longbow in it. Hmm. Yeah, they're building siege equipment, but they don't know why they're building siege equipment. Next to the fire, or there is a book that we can read. Construction orders. As you know from the terrible accidents of the last week, many passages through the mountain are unstable and liable to collapse at any moment. I do not wish us to lose more brothers and sisters in the search for lost cultish treasure. We must seal all entrances into the mountain. The Templars have done a careful sweep of the caves. Everything of worth has was collected. What remains of disciples of Andraste will be forgotten, buried in the earth. Once it is done, leave us. let us have no more talk of them. This is a new haven, restored to life by the Chantry, the true Chantry, and the Most Holy Justinia V, Mother Florentine. Yeah, that's one thing. They had a lot of stuff, I'm not gonna lie. A lot of stuff. So I guess this is one of the exits that were sealed off to stop people from going into the mountain to hopefully find something of, like, the followers of the Dragon and Draste from Dragon Age Origins. So it's nice to have a little call back to them. But... Once we're ready, we can head to the inner, inner wall of the, of the haven. There's going to be a lot of people talking, so sometimes it's interesting to hear, sometimes you just shouldn't. What did I miss on my map? Oh, have some armor made. I'm fine. So we can stop in this building, and we find... Is a tavern. Fix the door just like you asked, Flitter. I'll make a bless you. Can I get you something for your trouble? Master Harriet said I should go back right away. So, you sure? yeah, typical tavern stuff. We have Flissa, who is our barmaiden. What can you tell me about this area? Adana Stevens Apothecary. She's been making potions and tending to the wounded as best he can. Harriet is the Inquisition Smith. Whatever he can make you, Thren the Quartermaster can probably find. And for anything fancier, you can try buying from Segret. His prices aren't too high. Yet. Oh, there's also me knave. He studies beasts and things, as I understand. So it was me knave. Okay, well. got it. Goodbye. 
And then this is our resident barb. And if you come in here sometimes, you'll find uh, new songs to learn. I say learn, but it's kind of like a... Not really achievement, but like collecting things. This game is very heavy on collecting things that we'll see later on. So, A Tale of the Frostbacks, Tarmigan, an Avar tale from Ferelden Folklore and History by Sister Patrine, Chantry Scholar. On the post next to the door of the tavern, there is a little note. The Singing Maiden, have you ever heard the story of the King? Okay, there, there's, there's a lot of things to read. We will look at that later. It is another song for the Patreon of the Arts. So, if you're looking to complete that, then I say you should make sure you pick that up. And making our way up the stairs that are on the other side, um, north of the tavern, we can find Solus. The Chosen of Andraste, a blessed hero sent to save us all. Am I riding in on a shining steed? I would have suggested a griffon, but sadly they're extinct. Joke as you will, Posturing is necessary. I've journeyed deep into the fade in ancient ruins and battlefields to see the dreams of lost civilizations. I've watched as hosts of spirits clash to reenact the bloody past in ancient wars both famous and forgotten. Every great war has its heroes. I'm just curious what kind you'll be. What do you mean ruins and battlefields? Any building strong enough to withstand the rigors of time has a history. Every battlefield is steeped in death. Both attract spirits. They press against the veil, weakening the barrier between our worlds. When I dream in such places, I go deep into the fade. I can find memories no other living being has ever seen. You fall asleep in the middle of ancient ruins? Isn't that dangerous? I do set wards. And if you leave food out for the giant spiders, they are usually content to live and let live. I've never heard of anyone going so far into the Fade. That's extraordinary. Thank you. It's not a common field of study for obvious reasons. Not so flashy as throwing fire or lightning. The thrill of finding remnants of a thousand-year-old dream? I would not trade it for anything. I will stay then. At least until the breach has been closed. Was that in doubt? I am an apostate mage, surrounded by Chantry forces, and unlike you, I do not have a divine mark protecting me. Cassandra has been accommodating, but you understand my caution. Oh, immediately we get hit with a romance marker, so I guess that means that Solus is someone that can be romanced. We have a few romances in the game, they're all very interesting, I might say so myself. Um, but, yeah, why not? You came here to help Solus. I won't let them use that against you. How would you stop them? However I had to. Thank you. But now let us hope either the mages or the Templars have the power to seal the breach. Ooh. So, I could go on about people that I've romanced, but we should meet the, the, the entire roster of um, companions before I go over something like that. But just be known, there are people that you can romance in this game. I find them all very interesting. So, next to this person crouching down on the far corner of this house outside, there is a sack. We can be looted with a miniature spinning wheel. We can head inside the house that's closest to Solus. Nothing of note or import that's popping up at us. And then we can head to the house that's on the far side of this, like, colder sack corridor, and we find the apothecary. Apothecary! Find recipes through exploration or by visiting merchants. Visit an apothecary with herbs you gather in the wilderness to upgrade potions. Use the equip station to assign different potions to each of your party members and to replenish the potions you are carrying. Use the upgrade station to unlock permanent upgrades for your potions. Lissa said to check with you to make sure these are safe to serve. They're fine. Nobody will take sick as long as she boils them right. Smart woman for asking, though. But yes, this is the apothecary. We have the upgrade potions tab. 
So potion upgrading. You can upgrade potions you have already unlocked. To upgrade a potion, select a category, select a potion, then select the upgrade. Potion upgrades require a significant amount of herbs to unlock. Uh, in return, they give a permanent and significant bonus to your potions. I apologize if you hear more coughing. Literally everyone in my house right now is sick. Uh, I am currently getting over being sick, but I am still sick. So, we can research, but we don't have any Dawn Lotus. Uh, we'll have to find a place that has Dawn Lotus in order to upgrade, and then it just keeps going. So, as I keep saying, like, make sure make sure you are like picking up one um the kind of like picking up the schematic for these different like potions tonics and grenades but also make sure you're picking up material so you can upgrade your stuff because it is very important um i'm basically showing you like what it looks like without hitting that nug outside the golden nug because it like in the next in the pre in the next playthroughs following your first one, if you already have stuff upgraded and you've um, synced to the golden nug, you just already automatically have your schematics, so you can just start upgrading from jump. Ah, and on the desk in the apothecary, you'll be fine. Patient observations, day two. Pulse normal, breathing normal, still unresponsive. Careful drop feed of prep of root extract to hasten her recovery. A lot of thrashing. Mutters about too many eyes. Something about the gray? Encouraging? In the apothecary, behind Aiden, uh, we find the chest. We can loot it for a claymore, a tonics belt, which gives us a plus one to tonics. Potions, tonics, and the like are different. Um, and grenades are different, so... Having a plus one to potions won't give you a plus one to tonics and grenades capacity. We find a nug totem. So next to Aiden, we find the equip potions, so we can replenish if we needed to. Um, we can equip, but we have no more potions available, and then sooner or later we'll get access to this third. Let me know if you need anything. This third option. So now we can talk to Aiden. <laughs> Look who's back from the dead. Again. Again? I don't recall meeting you before. I'd be surprised if you did. You weren't particularly coherent. Someone had to patch you up after you staggered out of making those wear, though. So, you're welcome. I didn't realize. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you can pay me back by fixing the world. Name's Adan. <laughs> I'm in charge of keeping Adan. our little Sorry. band here stocked with potions and elixirs. Not that Seeker Pentagast seems to care whether we've got the supplies to actually do that. How are your people holding up? There's no shortage of work. That's for damn sure. Okay, I'm um, like, you seem a bit For fancy. a healer, you don't seem particularly nurturing. I'm not a healer. I'm an alchemist who's forced to play Mother Hen. You want something to burst into flame on contact with the air? Done. Gladly. Patching up wounded soldiers is a waste of my time and talents. But there are a few around who can help. Is there anything I can do to help out? We're fine as far as raw labor goes. You've more important things to do than tend to me. I only wish I'd been able to find Master Tajin's notes. Old bastard was working on something special. He died at the Conclave, and his notes weren't here. Been too busy dealing with the wounded to look for them. You said you thought Master Tajin was working on something special. If it helps, I found his notes. Ha! <laughs> the old codger was on the edge of a breakthrough here, but he couldn't see it. You want some of these mixed up? You just give the word. So with that, we can pass over the notes that we found at that house earlier. And we get a Lyrium potion bottle. Recipe for our troubles. How do I go about having potions made? Just take a look there and tell me what you'd like. Find a recipe for something better, I can make that too. All right, all right. So now we also get a regeneration potion recipe. I feel like regeneration potions are the best. I don't think I've ever had a need or use for a lyrium potion. I don't think I've ever used it. But always having another source of healing yourself is always good. You can increase your healing, 
um, and eventually it can turn into a life ward or a proximity healing potion, and it is so good. Alright. Before we head anywhere else, we can check out this last house. And on the bed, we can read. There's a book. So, we can make our way back up to the steps where we see the Chantry itself. Um, we can explore this little camp area. It's got three breach. tents. I heard and using the finally, we can meet the Quartermaster. If you're here to clean, Hess can get you a bucket and a broom. Anyone calls you knife here, come to me. Oh, oh. you're her. Thren. Inquisition Quartermaster. I'm doing what I can to supply this mess. If you find what I need to fill one of my requisitions, I'd appreciate you bringing it in. What do you do here? I make sure the Inquisition troops have food in their bellies and iron in their hands. Both are important. Lots of people expecting us to be heroes, marching all day to fight the demons. Turns out heroes need to dig latrines just like everyone else. How does someone end up as quartermaster for the Inquisition? I served for Eldon under Ten Logan McTeer, best commanding officer this world has ever seen. After they all turned on him at Denerim, though, there wasn't much use for people who held that opinion. King Alistair offered my services to the Inquisition, probably to get rid of me. With that attitude, I can't imagine how you made enemies in Denerim. People just don't want to hear the truth. I was at Ostagar, and I know what really happened. King Kalen overextended his position, and the Grey Wardens were too late lighting a signal. Following the original plan would have gotten everyone killed. Turn Loghain made the right decision. I apologize. Sister Liliana told me I shouldn't talk about this. Just forget it. What did you mean when you mentioned requisitions? I'm making this Inquisition run with what we have, but we're not a real army. We're stretched thin on materials. So I've put up a requisition list for anything that could help our people. Here, take a look. You find some iron and a good logging site. Maybe Harrick can get our troops better weapons. All right. Speaking of the logging site, we found a bunch of iron while we were walking around. And we found the logging site while we were out. So we have everything we need to fill the first order. If I have material for a special order, do I bring it to you? Just take it over there. One of my boys will take the materials or jot down what you found. Farewell. Make a go with you. Yep. So we can fill the first requisition order and be done. Effective reward plus one to power. So filling the requisitions give you different items, um, different materials, uh, and they can also give you um, power, which is used at the war table, if I remember correctly. Much appreciated. Plus one to power. All right, when we're ready, oh, oh, we gotta level up for our troubles, so we can take care of that. All right, when we're ready, we can open the doors to the chantry and walk in. Does it trouble you? If it wasn't enough to close the breach, what use is it? You did everything we asked of you. And it still didn't work. What's important is that your mark is now stable, as is the breach. You've given us time, and Solas believes a second attempt might succeed, provided the mark has more power. The same level of power used to open the breach in the first place. That is not easy to come by. What harm could there be in powering up something we barely understand? Hold on to that sense of humor. May I present Commander Cullen, leader of the Inquisition's forces. Such as they are, we lost many soldiers in the valley, and I fear many more before this is through. This is Lady Josephine Montelier. Our ambassador and chief diplomat. Anderan Atishan. You speak Elven? You just heard the entirety of it, I'm afraid. 
And of course, you know Sister Liliana. My position here involves a degree of... She is our spymaster. Yes. Tactfully put, Cassandra. Pleased to meet you all. I mentioned that your mark needs more power to close the breach for good. Which means we must approach the rebel mages for help. And I still disagree. The Templars could serve just as well. <sighs> we need power, Commander. Enough magic poured into that mark. Might destroy us all. Templars could suppress the breach, weaken it, so... Pure speculation. I was a Templar. I know what they're capable of. Unfortunately, neither group will even speak to us yet. The Chantry has denounced the Inquisition, and you specifically. They still think I'm guilty. That is not the entirety of it any longer. Some are calling you, a Dalish elf, the Herald of Andraste. That frightens the Chantry. The remaining clerics have declared it blasphemy, and we heretics for harboring you. Chancellor Roderick's doing, no doubt. It limits our options. Approaching the mages or Templars for help is currently out of the question. Just how am I the Herald of Andraste? People saw what you did at the temple, how you stopped the breach from growing. They have also heard about the woman seen in the rift when we first found you. They believe that was Andraste. Even if we tried to stop that view from spreading... Which we have not. The point is, everyone is talking about you. It's quite the title, isn't it? How do you feel about that? I'm not sure how I should feel. <laughs> the Chantry has decided that for you, it seems. People are desperate for a sign of hope. For some, you're that sign. And to others, a symbol of everything that's gone wrong. Will the Chantry attack us? With what? They have only words at their disposal. And yet, they may bury us with them. There is something you can do. A Chantry cleric by the name of Mother Giselle has asked to speak to you. She is not far, and knows those involved far better than I. Her assistance could be invaluable. I'll see what she has to say. You will find Mother Giselle tending to the wounded in the hinterlands near Redcliffe. Look for other opportunities to expand the Inquisition's influence while you're there. We need agents to extend our reach beyond this valley, and you're better suited than anyone to recruit them. In the meantime, let's think of other options. I won't leave this all to the Herald. Okay, and with this, we get access to the War Table. Operations. The War Table allows you to apply the power of the Inquisition throughout Orlais and Ferelden. Mother Giselle is in the Hinterlands, which can be found in the Ferelden side of the table. So, we have an option to look at Orlais or Ferelden. Um, I don't think there's anything on the Orlais side at the moment, but we'll give it a little look-see. The War Table. The Inquisition can unlock new areas for you to explore through scouting operations. Perform the scouting operation for the Hinterlands in the Ferelden side of the War Table now. You were saying something about... Colin? Hmm? I... Uh, yes. Haven has limited space for our soldiers to train. Perhaps we could set up something over here. Alright, the only one that can unlock it for us. So, we have access to connections, secrets, and forces. Um, certain areas may need a different look, outlook, perspective, or expertise on a situation, and that's where these three cards come into play. Um, sometimes certain things will only have access to one, sometimes they'll have access to all three, and sometimes they'll have access to like uh, just two out of the three. Um, these three cards are basically directly in line with our um, diplomat, which is Josephine Montelier, uh, Commander Cullen, who is the commander of our armies, and our spy master, Liliana. So, of course, connections, secrets, it falls in line, but we'll do the secrets part. Um, if Giselle dies, any hope for the Chantry support dies with her. The scouts will slip past the fighting, find her, and protect her with their lives. So Mother Giselle was last seen in the hinterlands outside of Redcliffe. Tending for refugees who fled the fighting between the renegade Templars and the apostate mages. 
The latest reports suggest that the vicious struggle between the two groups has spread to the hinterlands, catching the refugees and Mother Giselle in, tr in the middle. It is vital to protect her and, if possible, restore order to the area. Scout the hinterlands. We avoided the fighting as best we could. It's every bit as bad as we feared. The apostates are mad, attacking anything that moves, and it appears that the Templars are oh, here aren't following anyone's orders any longer. We located Mother Giselle and are trying to protect her, but she refuses to leave the refugees until we've ensured their safety. That will be hard to do without troops to push the apostates and the Templars out of the area. Commander Cullen asked me to make inquiries of Master Dennett, a retired horse master of Redcliffe, who lives in the area. We tried to contact him about obtaining better horses for the Inquisition, but we've been unable to get through the fighting. Lead Scout Harding. So, new area unlocked, the hinterlands. Um, do we want to travel? Not at the moment. So. Operations. You now have access to missions. Mission operations take time and bring the Inquisition resources and rewards. Only one mission per advisor can be active at a time. Some missions have a preferred type, which results in less time required when undertaken by the associated advisor. Missions may also provide different rewards depending on which advisor completes them. So some missions will be crucial to have the correct person to undertake them. All missions are done in real time. So sometimes you'll come across a mission that will take 13 hours and it is 13 hours of real time. So I'm gonna try and find a balance in order to get them done, but most times most times any mission that is like over an hour, if not completed or started at the beginning of the playthrough, at the beginning of like the episode, will not be finished until the next episode. So We'll just keep that in mind. So we have new missions, but I'm not going to worry about them. But I am going to do this one because it costs zero. The Black Emporium. Voices on the wind speak of a new power abroad in the world. Inquisition, they whisper. An ancient name restored. A memory rekindled and transformed into a blaze of hope. I hear the whispers and summon the fires of the Inquisition. Here in the depths beneath the city of chains, countless mysteries hide in shadows and anticipation of the light. Come, the Black Emporium awaits. Okay, so we can accept this and a ship has been secured. Be wary of what you find in the Black Emporium, Inquisitor. I have heard many frightful tale. Cullen. No, we will not travel. Okay, we will disperse our council for the moment. And we get so many codex unlocked, we get one for the Rebel Mages, Cullen, Liliana, the Templar Order, um, the Templar Order, End of the Accord, Josephine Montillier, the Hunt of oh, the Hinterlands, the War Table, the Hinterlands, the new operations are available, the War Table, yeah, yeah, yeah. World Travel. When not in a dungeon, you can use the quick map, or the quest map to travel to a distant location. So, we already know how to do that. So, it is Cullen, he looks slightly different, but... As I said, I don't know how long ago, like, Dragon Age 2 was. This is all the time I have for today. Um, I need to take care of this cold that is still bugging me. But it's going to be a little slow going to kick off, like, Inquisition, of course. The beginning part of the year is always a little busy, and then getting sick is always a big setback, because a lot of talking. I don't know if you can hear it. So next time we will be officially meeting our advisors um lady josephine matelier um and commander cullen and liliana she is around here somewhere we'll get to finally talk to cassandra which she wasn't out 
in the um, camp, so we weren't able to chat with her. And then we will have a look at the Chantry, kind of explore it in its own right. Um, if there's any codex entries, hopefully I'll have the voice to <laughs> read them off and everything. But yeah, um, and we'll also, if we have time, start to get into the Hinterlands, because like I said, it's they're very open world. So it's very difficult, it's difficult to try and figure out how to kind of like section off everything. So we will, you'll see when we get there is basically what I'm saying. And yeah, so yeah, next time, advisors, chantry, hinterlands, in that order, hopefully. <laughs> so yeah, until next time.